Hi and welcome to my channel. I am Tammy Osterk, the designer of BadBobbin.com. Today I am going to show you how I make my labels on my, by myself <laughs> on fabric. So the labels can be made and uh, with a fusible. You can fuse them on, iron them on, or they can be sewn in. A little tab like that. Um, even in your vinyl projects, I actually sew my labels in. They're right there. So um, you've seen in some of my videos when I add it, how I add it. It's still there. People can see it. People can read it in my little books. I have the same thing right there. Name, phone number, where they can reach me, the name of the business. Uh, all on the fabric. I'm going to take you to the fabric store and buy some fabric and show you which one to get. I'm going to walk you through how to get it on the paper, cut it right, get it through your printer. There is no guarantee that this is going to work in every printer. I do not guarantee that this will work. Something may have go wrong, letting you know. Uh, it might get caught in your printer. Your printer may not be a good one. I have used it on four different printers. I have used it on laser printers and inkjet printers. I have never had a problem myself, so if you follow the directions and make sure that it's attached to your paper really well, especially in all the corners and sides, then you should have um, good results. But I do not guarantee it's going to work on every uh, printer, so you need to be aware of that. I don't guarantee anything. I am not responsible if anything happens. It is your risk to put it through your printer. So um, with that said, uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Any comments at the bottom, put them in the bottom for me. Let me know what you think, what you want me to do, what you have any questions, anything. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Subscribe, ring the bell. You'll get more notifications on awesome videos when I get to them. So, further ado, let's go shopping and let's go get some fabric to make these wonderful labels. See you at Joanne's. Okay, so I'm at Joann's and I'm going to pick out my um, fabric that I need to make our labels. These are the labels. I brought them with me and okay, I have a coupon today. We're in the calico aisle and then as you go along you'll find all your nice white fabrics and we are looking for a muslin. So I've kind of pre-did it a little bit so that we're not kind of digging through everything while you're watching video. So. Um, these are three different muslins, and I'm going to show you kind of hopefully you'll be able to see on the video the difference. So let me, sorry it's shaky. So try to hold still here. These are three different um, types, and the type that we want is the one on the right, the premium muslin. It's only $5.99. You don't need the expensive, and you don't want to go too cheap because the weave on it is the difference. So when we're going to put this through an actual printer, so we're putting it either through a jet um, printer or a laser. I've used both and they've worked great with both as long as you, you, you know, can do it. Follow the directions that I give you. Um, no guarantee, so you got to be aware that um, it might get stuck in your printer, it may not. Uh, it might print good, it may not. Here's the difference on the printing. The premium muslin is a um, tighter weave. It's kind of got a shiny feel to it a little bit into the tighter weave. That way the ink is not going to spread and run. Your next one that's a little more expensive, it's heavier and thicker, so you might have just a, a harder time sewing it into your product as well. Um, it's got a tight weave, but it is heavier and thicker. It's up to you. You don't need to spend that kind of money. And then there's the lower priced one, that $2.99. And this one actually is, the, the weave is very um, loose on it. Um, so you can kind of see through it a little bit. I don't know, you can't tell a little bit through the video. So this one is the $2.99, you don't really want it. Uh, if you're going to go inexpensive, you might get your labels becoming inexpensive and the ink may run on this. Then you've got the more expensive for $9.99, you really don't have to go with it, it's just a little bit thicker. Um, it's up to you what you want to spend on your labels. Um, play around with it. Um, I use the one for $5.99, it's you know thin, it's got a tight weave. And uh, once you run it through the printer, you're going to iron it with a hot iron anyway, so it kind of sets the ink in there. I always, always check my remnants before I do anything, and I did, and there were no remnants of this fabric on um, this time. 
but I've been fortunate the last two times I needed labels, I was able to pick up three quarters of a yard in the remnant and it's always 50% off. But lucky, we have coupons today. Yay, there's coupons and I get them on my phone too. So with the coupons, I'm gonna go ahead and get a yard of this and I will be seeing, I, like I said, I normally never buy anything at regular price or actually off the bolt. The majority of the time I'm a remnant person. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the premium muslin. We'll pull this out. I'll get a better picture of the label for you. Whoops, <laughs> you can tell I've already been to the remnant pile. Oh yeah, remnants, always check them. I got a great piece of vinyl here. That green is awesome for Grinch for Christmas. Love it. And then I also found one in the $9 uh, vinyls. This one is really cool. It's got a texture, just thought I'd share. Yay, and I always ask for a rod. They'll go ahead and give me um, a pole that I can wind it on, so they give them to you for free. But yes, that's a really cool, awesome one. So, sorry, I'm <laughs> back to, uh, this is the label, so it's premium muslin. And that is the skew for it, and it's $5.99. So it's 100% cotton, machine washable, and cold, and it's the premium muslin. So I'm gonna go to the cutting table, get it done, and I will meet you back at home and show you how to make your labels. All right, we're back from the store. And it happened to be appreciation day, so I got this bag for free, so it was really cool. So, uh, I'm loading everything. Got some cool remnants. Got this really, really awesome um, vinyl. This was really cool. Green, and it's kind of got a pearlescent to it, so pretty cool. But we'll put everything else aside. What I need is my white. Also got a one inch ruler, had my 60% coupon. This was good for cutting exactly the one inch uh, strips for your bob. So I'm gonna put that down. So I also went in the remnants and I found, um, just happened to find it. If not, you can purchase it. But I also do my labels as iron on as well as um, sew. So I happened to find the feasible mesh which um, this one's, uh, you know, can, uh, what is this, the heavy duty. Pelon 725 heavy duty. I guess they call it Wonder Under. Um, there's also a heat and bond, I guess, that has one, so you can go a little bit heavier or thicker that you want. So it's just a, a glue, and you'll iron it on the back of your fabric, and then when you're ready, you peel off the paper and then iron it onto your project. So uh, we need to iron our fabric and make sure it's got no creases in it, no wrinkles or anything, so we need to iron it really good. So I'm gonna iron this and I will be right back. Alrighty, all nice and ironed and flat, no wrinkles. There we go. All right, and we've um, done our labels, so we're ready to go. Everything's ready on the computer, and we're going to now, um, prepare our fabric to go through the printer. So you need to really make sure that um, it's not gonna get caught. I don't guarantee this, so be careful and be cautious. I no guarantee it's gonna go through every printer. The three printers that I've put them through throughout my 15 years of doing labels, they have made it through all three printers. You just need to do one sheet at a time and make sure they're cut perfectly to the right size. I'm using colored paper, um, so I can make sure they're cut properly and for you to see it as well on how I do it. That's why I'm using colored paper. So you don't have to. You can use white paper if you can see it. So it's just plain old um, thin paper that you use in your printer. That's all. I'm going to print out four today for myself so that um, I have enough labels to, <laughs> to last me the rest of the year. I put them in pretty much all of my projects. And I do at least one sheet with the fusible web behind it uh, for ironing into some of the projects that I can't quite get that label in or it's going to stick out on the other end or something. So here we go. So I use um, a tacky spray. Uh, the one that I have found that works the best for me because some have been just really too tacky and they leave a residue is the Alleen's Repositionable. This I use for everything and it works great. 
especially on in my embroidery stuff and, and the vinyls and hooping and floating. I use this and I never had a problem. It doesn't gum up the needles. It doesn't have a problem with the embroidery going through it. It just works wonder wonderful. So Aline's original repositionable tacky spray is what I use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the whole paper first and then I will take the paper and attach it uh, to my fabric and I want to make sure that I'm going with my lines up and down. You can you can kind of see um, in the fabric the way the stitching is and the lines and the pull. So you want to make sure that the lines are going up and down with your um, project so when you cut your labels they're not going to completely unravel or fall apart. And we also cut them with pinking shears. So I'm going to go spray my paper and I will be right back. Alright, I've got two of them done. The tacky. Make sure I spray all the corners to make sure the corners stick down too. And I'm going to position. You don't want to be right on the, the bias here, so move over a little bit. A little too thick on that part. And just make sure it's down really good. And my next sheet. And I'm going to get kind of close. I can, I can cut close. Minimal waste. That's me. So if you're not comfortable with it being that close and cutting the line right, then um, go ahead and move it aside. You'll be good. So I've got those two. There we go. Make sure they're stuck good. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut these two out. And then I'll do the two again on the other, on the next round. You don't want to um, do too, too many at first just because you don't want it to dry too much. You can't let this sit overnight. Um, I'm sure it'll peel off, but you just don't want to take that risk of your paper being stuck to your, you know, if you use a permanent glue or anything. So then you take your, your straight rule and rotary. Make sure you've got a new blade. Um, I don't think I have a new blade in here, but will work with it. So you want to make sure it's really straight, uh, straight, no nicks in your uh, rulers and a good blade. And you'll line your ruler up right next to the line of the paper. So colored paper is a little easier to see. And then just cut straight up. Make sure it's cut before you release and that way if it's not and you missed you'll be right on. Then you can let go. I'm going to go right up the center of this one. There we go. Perfect. Cut off any straggling, you don't want any edges. All right. So I have my two sheets ready to go. And you want to make sure that they're, they're somewhat, you know, pretty good tack to your paper because you don't want them coming off in your printer. So that's why you want to make sure you've sprayed your, your paper good enough and um, that it's holding your, your fabric down. All right. So now we're off to the printer. Okay, I'm at the computer now and I'm going to show you how I create the label uh, so we can print it. Uh, go online and I'm going to go to Avery.com so I have it set up already and I have an account already. You can um, create the account, it doesn't cost anything, it's free and it's better to have an account and remember everything that way anything you do create they store it for you for free. It's always there if you lose it on your computer you just go back to Avery and it's in your account on the Avery and you're able to go in and actually edit. Once you bring it into a PDF on your computer 
you can no longer edit it and you cannot bring that file back into Avery either. You have to have the Avery file. So uh, the first page is here when you get to it for your account. There's products, blank labels, custom printing, and templates. We're going to go to the templates and find a template. And under that, we'll scroll down, and these are all the different types of products that you can print from Avery that they sell. So there's the labels, there's uh, address labels, business cards, written cards, you can see everything that's on here. Letting you know that this circle or the square or these lines will not be on your label. It will not be on your printout. It's just showing you the size of the label and what you need to be inside that square. So that actual square and lines will not be on your label. So we're going to go to the address labels. That's what I use. The ones that you see me use in um, my products. And these are the different size labels that there are. There's a 60 sheet, which is right here, and there's also an 80 sheet. I use the 80, it's a smaller, little bit smaller label. Sometimes I use the 60 uh, if I have larger products that I like a little bit larger label in. All right, so I go and want to click on that. And remember, the lines will not be there, and we want to start designing. And uh, labels come up in different formats of design style. You don't want to pick anything that's got really tight design like this. You got to remember it's going to print out onto fabric. So if it's really a lot of detail, it may not show up real well because of the fabric. So I'm going to start with just a blank label. And these labels I fold in half. So I'm going to work on one side of the label and then work on the other side. So remembering that we are dividing it in half. So my first thing will be, I'm gonna put text in here. And the best text would be to use is like a block, an aerial, uh, times new, uh, what is it, the Roman, something that's very simple, not fancy, not uh, scroll or any of that sort. So you wanna keep it very simple. We're gonna add a um, text box. I'm gonna shorten it because I only want half. I'll go to my lines and those lines are to make sure that you don't go out of them because if you do then it will not print. That is your printing area. And we're gonna just put something in here real quick. So I've got Tammy's embroidery put in there and if I want, um, I'm gonna bold this. So let's highlight that and bold it so it'll be a little bit darker when it does print. So you can see the label a little better. If you do more information and more detail and smaller print, then bolding it may not work. It might just end up blurring it all and bleeding in the fabric. So once you've done that and you have your information, then you're going to come over and you're going to, uh, you want to save it. So just hit save and it's going to ask you, you're going to give it a project name and we'll just uh, give it a project name, save to your account. That's what we want to do first, to save it to your account, which will be in Avery, and you'll be able to go back to it and make any type of editing you want. So now we're going to make it available to print on your fabric. So that will be print, or uh, review, preview and print, sorry. Preview and print, you're going to click on that. And this is what it's going to show you that it's going to look like. Remember, those squares will not be around it. It's just going to be playing with whatever you typed on it. So all these little squares will not be. It's just showing you that if it was the label, that's where your information would be on the actual label. So we want to print yourself and print now. And this window will pop up. And what you would like to, should do is go ahead and download the PDF. And when you download the PDF, it's going to go to one of your folders. Uh, most likely it's in your download folder. But uh, what I do is just open the PDF myself. And I'm actually in Chrome. It's depending on what you're working in. This is what Chrome shows. Uh, some of the other uh, programs that you're running may open it in uh, differently than this. So this window actually shows that I can download it here. 
some of the other ones you may not have that option to download but you still can print from it so I would download it from this window or I can go to my print and this is what it looks like see there's no windows or blocks around it so this is what it's going to look like on your fabric so when I go hit the print it's going to actually come up in the PDF and Avery print so this is another way of doing it or if I saved it so this one I don't want to do this print so I'm going to cancel this way I'm actually um, have it downloaded which is the best way to do it and it happens to be in my PDF folder so I have two different labels one's a little bit larger than the other we're going to go ahead and go with the larger one and like I said this is exactly what you're going to see no lines or nothing and it'll print on the fabric so then we'll have this amount of space when we cut it to, that, to be able to sew and remember it's one at a time so there's no guarantee remember of the, your printer I can't guarantee anything or I'm not liable for it so it's up to you on doing this we go to file I'm oh, sorry I'm gonna hit the printer the PDF and we'll make sure I use a grayscale so I make sure that it's using all black but if you have color go ahead and try to do your color you just want to keep away from the fine details we're gonna go with actual size and portrait and we're ready to go so I will see you at the printer okay we're set up at the printer now I have my sheets so this happens to be a laser printer um, it has worked on both laser and inkjet like I said no guarantee I don't know your machine you have to be very careful um, with it and putting the paper in and making sure that it feeds in so um, my drawers down below and I'm going to feed my paper in or my, my fabric I'm going to do one sheet at a time and make sure it's laid flat make sure there's no curled edges and uh, make sure my printer's on and then um, I'll go ahead and only print one print and I showed you how to set that up uh, when you when we did our uh, computer part so I hit print keep an eye on it keep our fingers crossed <laughs> Voila! Oh, we got a little wrinkle in there, which, you know, that's fine. I've got 80 labels here, so uh, it happened to, to wrinkle on us, but it wasn't too bad, actually. It actually stayed printed. So with a laser printer, the way that works is it, it puts the ink on a drum, and then the drum heats it up and heats it onto your paper or fabric. So it, it will smear. So this one on a laser printer, we don't want to touch it yet because we actually have to set this ink into the fabric. So I'm going to do one more, and I should have glued a little bit better, or been quicker actually, I mean, because I would have glued it and stuck it right away, but I had to, um, you know, with videotaping and stuff, everything took a minute, so by the time I got back from gluing it and setting up, the glue kind of dried a little bit, but we're still good. Um, check that the paper size is right, that's all good. We'll go back in, hit print. Everything's still the same. We want actual size because we don't have to worry about label lines. And here we go. One more time. Alright, let's see how this one turned out. A few little wrinkles here and there, but that's, you know, a given. That's why I said it might get stuck in your printer, so you got to be really careful with it. So I don't, I don't want to touch anything. I want to actually uh, go to the ironing board with this, and we're going to heat set it. So everything turned out well, if you can see it. And, yep, we're pretty good. So I will meet you at the ironing board. I'm at the ironing board and I have a plain piece of paper with nothing on it. We need to have this piece of paper to put on top because you don't want to iron directly on it um, the first time because the ink will transfer to your iron. You don't want to do that. So we're going to remove it from the paper. It comes right off. 
There's like no residue or nothing. Um, there's still some on the paper, and you can spray it again and use the paper again to make more labels. So if you want to do one at a time and only use one piece of paper, you can do that. Take that off. So we'll get those wrinkles out too. So I'm going to lay it with the uh, print up. Take my piece of paper and go over the top of it, and then with a hot iron, I have it at the, the hottest settings. I'm going to go over it. Just flatten it out and heat set the ink is what I'm basically doing is making sure that ink is setting down into the fabric. With an ink jet printer, you don't have to worry too much. I still iron it just to make sure it's set in there and the, the, any residue has been taken off so it doesn't smear. Um, but you can kind of, kind of see where it's actually picked up on the paper. So that little bit of the dust from the toner would have actually just smeared your label. So you want to make sure you get that off. And, you know, test one to make sure that they're, it's set and really good. And then you can turn it over and iron again. Just bring, bring that to the fabric. So that one's done. I'm going to do this one more time. And I'm going to use the other side because I don't want this ink to maybe transfer onto this. So smooth out a little bit to get those wrinkles where it kind of bunched in the printer. And like I said with the inkjet printer, it's actually going to just jet it into the fabric and the fabric will absorb that ink that's being put in. So the difference is toner versus inkjet. So two different little processes. Um, you know, but I still iron both of them just to make sure that the ink is set into the fabric. There we go. And we're good. Got the wrinkles out. Most of them are straight, but you know, once you, these are my fold over, like I said, these ones I actually fold in half as a tag with information on both sides. Uh, I would use the same, or I can do a different label if I want with all the information straight across if I'm going to do an iron on one. So, all right, back to the cutting table. Okay, so I have my paper. If I want to do two more, still tacky, I'll use the glue on those. And that can go away. So you have your labels. Here we go. Everything's good. It's on fabric. You can use them. They're not going to smear. We ink set. I use pinking shears. Things don't fray, like, you know, you're going to get these ends. So pinking shears would be the best. And you're just going to kind of, you know, eyeball it. You're going to go up the center here with your pinking shears. Or you can, you know, draw a line if you want, because usually this end is either inside the project or you cut it off. So I leave this side um, without cutting it. That way, when I do fold it over, I'm going to have enough fabric left over that's going to, you know, actually be sewn in just about right here. So cut the label in strips, and then I just hold it and, you know, however you want to cut it, and I just guide it so that I'm right in between each one of my labels. If you have it in your hand, you're guiding the bottom of your scissors so they're not slipping and you hold your project so that you can get it cut straight across. And there we go. We have all our little labels made out of fabric. We sew it into our projects. I just fold mine in half. I kind of make sure that the, the writing lines up, you know, it, in the, this end so you don't cut off half of it. And you've seen me put it in my project. You've seen how I do it. I just keep it folded. There we go. It's going to sew right here. And you've got your little t tab with your name, information, phone number, whatever you want to put on your label. The other ones then, um, once you iron on the fusible, I usually will cut um, strips. And you don't have to use pinking shears since it's fusible. It's not going to fray. So I'll, I'll just cut strips uh, with the rotary. 
and then once I cut one long strip, I peel the paper off, and then I start cutting because trying to peel little papers off of each one if they stick really good is not easy. So I'll just go ahead and cut one strip, and then I end up peeling the paper off, and then I'm going to cut my labels. And I usually leave them on, and I only cut, <clears throat> excuse me, I only cut as I need a label for uh, the iron-on portion because I don't use the iron-on as, as often as I do for the sew-in. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed my video. Any questions, put them down in the bottom. Subscribe, ring that bell. You'll get more tips and tricks and how to make things in embroidery. Uh, any other things you want me to touch base on and try to do a video on, let me know down below. I need some ideas. So uh, it's great to have you here. Thanks for being supportive to me. And I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make your labels. Meet you at the cutting table.